welcome to Ouroboros Automotive. My name is Logan, and today we're going to be continuing and finishing our conversation on the Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4. So in the last video, we spoke about the electronically controlled suspension. And what we're going to roll into now is talking about the four-wheel uh, four steering and the active aero that was offered on these Mitsubishi 3000 GTs. And uh, on top of that, we're going to be wrapping up the whole video and I'll have some words to put in at the end on how I feel about the 3000 GT. So let's talk about the four wheel steering. The four wheel steering meant that when your vehicle got to a certain speed that the vehicle, the rear wheels would actually end up steering with the front tires. So the back tires are actually going to steer the same direction as you put your front tires, which helps for better turning and better cornering and things like that. Uh, the way that they ended up doing that was by putting a power steering pump directly into the rear differential. And so that power steering pump was run off of the rear differential in order to supply that fluid and that pump pressure to the back wheels. At which point you pretty much just had a secondary rack and pinion. You had a rack in the front, you had a rack in the rear. And where the normal torsion bars or uh, radius arms, depends on who you're talking to and what they call them, they're tie rods. Instead of being those tie rods being tied to the frame, they were then just bolted to do another rack and pinion. And so it allowed for the vehicle to turn up to 12 degrees in the direction that you're turning. And again, novel idea. And when you pair it up with the electronically controlled suspension, it does worlds of benefit going into a curve. But that's actually all there is to talk about on the, on the four-way steering. It's a relatively simple system. It's pretty much just like your front steering system, just in the back. The only really can, uh, odd thing is the fact that it has a power steering pump plumbed directly into your rear differential. And then the last thing we got to talk about is the active aero, which is active aerodynamics. What this means is that the Mitsubishi 3000 actually had a front Ventruvi uh, spoiler that would drop down from the nose once you got over a certain speed. And the rear spoiler would then deflect after you got to a certain speed. And so how this worked was at over 31 mile an hour. So once you hit 31 mile an hour, the front splitter or the Ventruvi spoiler would then drop by two inches, which would add downforce to the front tires and uh, reduce the front end trying to get up away from the ground. So. Again, we'll circle back to that here in a moment. And then in the back, you had your active, you had your rear spoiler. And what that would do was, again, at over 31 mile an hour, it would tilt and add 15 degrees to the angle of the spoiler. Again, increasing the downforce that is on those rear tires. So on top of that rear spoiler deflecting like that, it then would have a secondary uh, little cleaner come up. Uh, and what that did was it prevented the vehicle like dust and dirt from going over your vehicle and just getting all over the rear tail of your vehicle. It would actually just allow the dirty air to just go off of your vehicle instead of just completely covering your the back of your vehicle and anything that you would find in, on the roads. So there were three settings for this active era. You had auto one, auto two, and off. Off is exactly what it sounds like, off. It meant that the active aero would not engage at all, which was great for times when you were driving your vehicle in poor weather conditions, snow or rain or anything like that. It would allow for your not to have that splitter drop on the front end and catch on something. And then auto one was normal everyday operations. And that's just when you got over 31, it'd come out. And once you reduced under 15, it'd go back in. So, the last one is auto two, which was just manual function. If you held down the button and put it into auto two, then automatically the wing, or the rear spoiler would adjust and the front splitter would come down. And that was purely meant for either car shows and looking cool or actually cleaning your vehicle and getting all the gunk that would have been hidden up inside of there. So now we have talked and touched on every part of the, well, all the extra pieces to this 3000 GT VR4. We couple in the electronic controlled suspension, the active aero, the four-wheel steering, 
and the fact that it's all wheel drive and twin turbocharge. And what you have is a very, very volatile street vehicle. And this thing was just this side of track. And sadly, not a lot of people bought these. And they are, even now, uh, it's hard to find 3000 GTs that are fully intact with all of these options, especially the four-way steering, because there was issues with the pumps. This vehicle was the only one that had a power steering pump on the rear like that. So instead, people would take the pumps, throw them away, and plate off the diff and just delete out their rear four-way steering. And so it's kind of saddening that not a lot of these things exist anymore because not a lot of people or companies actually have support for these types of things either. But when you start dealing with the fact that you have a twin turbocharged all-wheel drive vehicle going down a hill and heavy braking into a 90 degree curve, you then have the anti-rolling, the anti-squatting, and the anti-diving all going into play and keeping that vehicle as stable as possible and keeping that weight on all four tires so that that power can hit the ground. Anybody that sits there and just peels out every time they hit the accelerator at a light, there's no point in having that much power other than to just do burnouts all the time. Which, cool, yeah, love it. Don't mind it whatsoever. But if you don't have the weight over those power wheels, the wheels that are actually pro uh, propelling you forward, then all you're going to do is just sit there and spin your tires. And when you start getting into uh, vehicle dynamics and weight dynamics going into curves, you go into a curve that's on a 90 degree into a right, you're going to end up forcing all of your weight to the left hand side, which then you lose traction or you lose weight over your right side, which means you could lose traction. If you lose traction going into a curve like that, you'd have to back out in order to gain control over the vehicle. And with all of these things set in place, they mitigated that. And on top of that, they mitigated that 25 years before the Bugatti Veyron had that deployable air brake spoiler. Bugatti, the Bugatti Veyron, which everybody knows and everybody loves, made that air brake and that deployable air brake a very mo or like novel thing and became a mass like, uh, it became a well-known component. And then you started seeing Porsches and Audis and uh, Volkswagen, well, Volkswagen owns Bugatti, so yeah, and Audi. But you saw a lot of these higher-end super and hyper cars start implementing this deployable rear spoiler, which Mitsubishi did in the early 90s in order to help with downforce. Now, I definitely would love to get a hold of somebody that has a 3000 GT VR4 and somebody that has a wind tunnel and actually see what the difference is in the drag and everything like that when the active arrow is actually active. I'd also like to see the times versus like turning off of your, all of your electronically controlled suspension and everything versus having all of that stuff actually turned on around a track. I would love to be able to see that and love to find somebody that actually has one of these vehicles so we can set it up just so we can actually see if it actually made that big of a difference. Obviously, the idea was ahead of its time. But eventually it came to fruition. And a lot of other companies decided, you know what, this, this would be a good idea. Sadly, it was too late and the Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4 is no longer in production. It actually had a very short production life between it and its sibling, the Dodge Stealth. But... I am very happy that we actually got to see these vehicles. I, a lot of people rag on Mitsubishi uh, because Mitsubishi was never one of those big JDM vehicles. Uh, it was never like a Honda or an Acura or a Subaru. And a lot of the vehicles that they produced, it, the 3000 GT, the Mitsubishi Eclipse, the Eagle Talon, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo, or like, your Gallant VR4s, those were all amazing vehicles with astounding bits of techno uh, technology in it and engineering that never got off the ground and was never given its due. 
And because Mitsubishi is kind of looked down upon or not even thought of, they stop producing any of these vehicles. They stop dealing with performance vehicles at all. But they were trying. Before all other companies were, they were trying. I highly doubt you can find a Honda Civic with all of those things included. Even on the VTEC ones. It was never offered. Same thing with the Subies. Subaru never did that. And yet everybody prizes the WRX and the STI or the TRDs and the Type R's. It's, and I'm not ragging on them. They're nice vehicles. If that's what you like, they're nice. I like me a Subi as much as anybody else does. But it's kind of sad that Mitsubishi, who was far, far beyond the capabilities of any other manufacturer at the time, kind of got left in the dust. But... That's all I got for this video. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, like, subscribe, all the normal YouTube things. Um, if you want, go check it, or check out my Facebook page. If you're interested in getting a shirt, message me. And until next time, have a wonderful night.